Hello and welcome to Bobo Bunso Vintage Live. I'm Lisa, I'm a vintage inspired seamstress and dressmaking teacher, plus knitter, crafter, general maker and vintage treasure hunter, fashion history and social history lover. So you'll get a bit of all of that here on my channel and if you've been here before, you'll know that's what I like to do. Primarily it's about sewing. In today's um, video, I'm going over some of my recent makes and um, what I'm planning to be making too. So I shall see you back here in a moment to chat all about those sort of things, so and tell. <laughs> time here we've had some glorious weather and the summer holidays are winding up before my youngest daughter goes back to university um, my oldest daughter is back here for the foreseeable now while she's working um, so we're grabbing days out when we can um, alongside trying to squish it in with working and of course sewing because it's really important but I've I think I've been knitting a bit more it's been easier to just pick up and put down knitting I've also found it's not so easy to sew at the moment and I couldn't work out if it was my sewing inspiration had gone because I'm putting so much of my creativity into planning my new business um, you know designing courses and and all of that so so much energy is going towards that was it just because it's so blinking hot that it's really hard to sit down and concentrate on sewing or had my creative mojo just disappeared for a bit which it is want to do as most of you who say no um, I think when it first happened to me it was a bit of a worry I thought oh my goodness have I gone off this do I not want to sew ever again and then it came back and now I just accept it as a normal part of everything it's it's um very cyclical you can't just be pouring out ideas all the time or feeling creative bursts of energy you need those resting moments and it's just best to not try and force it and then it just comes back you know it, you might see a color or a print or um, a shape or something and it just it starts that flow going but for me the thing that started flow going again was sewing jersey I find that's a really good go-to for me it's um, such a quick easy fabric to work with I'm not worrying about fitting um, I'm not worrying about putting in zips or you know doing all the extra work that's required um and the thing that really got me going was knickers i mean knickers pants uncrackers bloomers what else could we call them i don't know i think that pretty much covers them anyway i wanted to make knickers for a long time um and millie and i bought ourselves uh, a cry cut machine a while ago so we wanted to sort of put all the lovely rude phrases on the bum of the knickers that's been an idea for a long time. Well, finally, I got around to buying a knicker pattern. Been planning to it for a while. Tilly and the Buttons had um, a slight discount on their iris knickers, so I thought I'd get them. And I also popped in this pattern, the Agnes top that I'm wearing, so I'll tell you about that in a moment. Um, so yeah, it was this week, and I'd got bits of jersey and some um, stretch elastic, you know, lace. So I thought, you know, I'm going to have a go because I'd gone shopping, needed some more pants and I like to wear like little Brazilian shorts or thongs, mainly I think because I'm tall and I find knickers really, really uncomfortable. I don't want to put on a pair of pants and then as the day goes on, they keep moving up and down either side of your butt and you're trying to pull them out or you're not pulling them out and you're just blooming uncomfortable. I, I just don't see the thrill and the joy in that. So we went looking for pants and... They all looked really awful. None of them inspired me. And I thought, unless I can try them on, I don't know if they're going to work. So, make your own. It seems a godsend. So, I've only made one pair so far, but I've got some other bits of fabric. So, this is my first pair, look, in cherry jersey with this lovely red lace. So, these are the mid-rise. So, you've got a choice of granny rise you know granny knickers so they go up to the waist nice and comfy mid rise which are far bigger pant than i normally wear but super comfy or the low rise which are the little shorts and then you could have high leg which i really don't like i find that a bit bay watch um 
but you've got high rise, which I'm gonna be doing as I've just said, you've got mid rise or low rise legs. So these are the mid rise legs um, with the mid rise pants. So I'm gonna try the more shorts version. So those are just absolutely thrilled and they were just so fun to make, you know, just really quick, easy make. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. So I've got here the leopard print and look at this, this lovely hot pink lace. I'll go with my black bras. I've always liked matching bra and knicker sets. I, uh, my mum always instilled in me having lovely underwear. You know, if you feel really good underneath, you'll feel good on outside, whatever you're wearing. And it's true. And I love having proper matching underwear sets, um, but they cost money. So, you know, can't buy them too often. I have got loads of lovely underwear. But this is going to break my rule of matching underwear by making some. I have got some um, black to make, but of course I will be putting some more fun lace on the side. I've got some yellow and some green in my jar there. So knickers are where it's at right now. And then the other thing I made, we went on a lovely bike ride yesterday, which was utterly um, fabulous. <laughs> National Trust estate and before we went in the morning I put together the PDF of this pattern the Agnes top by Tilly and the Buttons cut the fabric you know the jersey out and this is um, a lovely soft bamboo jersey I had from Lush Cloth I've had this for quite a while now and saving it for the right project and then when we got back um, I sewed it up you know and put the little elastic in it was the sleeves that really did me on this. I don't normally like um, this kind of neckline on a, a t-shirt. I prefer a boat neck or I really love the Audrey. I, I think I might do the Audrey as the centre for this with the sleeves. It's the sleeves that really got me on this pattern. You see, they're quite sporty style. They're really, obviously this is a softer jersey so it doesn't hold so much. They're all gathered here with the elastic and then they're eased in so there's a lot of extra on the sleeve head here so I could put something underneath to hold those up a bit and then I chose to add a little bow because it looked a bit plain here it just needed a little bit extra but I'm really really chuffed with it it's lovely I decided to make this because I've always liked the pattern but I wasn't too sure I've never been too sure about these poofy sleeves on me because I'm very narrow shouldered but um, a lady in my jersey workshop, and I've taught a couple and I've got a few more coming up for those. Um, yeah, I've been writing various workshops today um, to get them out there for people. Um, anyway, going back to the jersey workshop, she chosen this pattern in a lovely, it was um, pink with red stripes. Um, and as she was making it, I just thought, yeah, it's decided. I'm not going to think about that pattern, I'm going to get it. So when I got the iris knickers, I had just popped this one in as well. And so Jersey has just got me back, you know, that quick sewing fix. Highly recommend. It just makes you feel so much happier. So that's on my recent sewing. I was going to tell you a bit about my knitting and then my upcoming plans. So on my knitting, absolutely thrilled, I have finished the Sinead cardigan by um, Tara Dayton Atelier. Um, so this has taken, she rewrote um, an original, I think it was a 60s knitting pattern. So she's written, rewritten it. So it's very um, ballet. I'm trying to turn it around so you can see how it comes around here. I mean, this is wool. I will not be wearing this for a while. It's really thick. I, it was like having a blanket over my legs while I was um, knitting it. I've opted for a lovely satin ribbon. I love the effect of the ribbon. I have got to cut them short. I haven't tried this on yet to see how long I want them. But I love the effect of the ribbon. That's one reason I did the ribbon. And the other reason is because I absolutely hate knitting narrow ties like that wide, backwards and forwards, like really long. I haven't got the patience. I've done it before. And you know, life is just too short. There's so many other things I'd rather be doing than knitting ties. So go and buy some ribbon, sew it in, done. I'm happy and I love the effect, so no other problem. It's It's been funny with knitting because I'm quite a slow knitter, but I've finished up two things recently. 
The other one is this Honeybop cardigan and it's got the sleeves very much like my Agnes. Um, they come to about here on me. Um, so they've got lovely poofy sleeves. I'll pop a photo up. This is by Poison Girls and I found the most delightful vintage buttons. I don't know if you'll see them, we'll have to do a close up if not. Really tiny, mother of pearl, but they're, um, they're sort of raised and they curl round. So absolutely thrilled with little cotton v-neck cardigan. So I will definitely be making more of these. I keep thinking I've got my pink cardigan, which is my favourite, but I want to make more shades of pink cardigan. So I might even make one. I thought this might be quite nice in um, you know, merino with um, like a mohairy lace. You know, you use them both together to get that really cosy cardigan for winter. I would do longer sleeves. So I'm quite tempted to go make myself a latte after this and um, let's go wool shopping. There's the thought, it's just popped in my head. Um, I've got various other projects on the go at the moment um, with knitting. I've got a lovely brown cardigan I'm working on and a maroon. But the one I'm trying to finish at the moment, this is another Poison Girls. I do love their patterns. Now I can't remember the name of this one, so I'll pop that up with a, an image. But I'm doing this in a lovely big merino. It's drops, um, big merino in this lovely foresty green and the pattern has uh, a musical note on it which I really like but I just wanted to make um, a simple plain um, waist length green cardigan for the winter so I'm really enjoying this this knits up quickly or rather it should except I thought I need a more depth in my arm side so I knitted it down too far and then I knitted down to here so I was getting near the waistband and I just thought Oh, it's totally wrong. So I had to rip out to there that much. Mm. So I'm knitting back to that. So yeah, that was a bit of a uh, but yeah, it's coming. I'm really enjoying my knitting um, and all the plans. So it's just nice. I'll do that of an evening, you know, because I can pretty much, <clears throat> other than checking the pattern and, um, so, you know, counting stitches, I can just knit like this while I'm not looking at it. It always reminds me of probably like one of those ladies at the guillotine yeah, that sat there and knitted while all the gory action was going on. I'd have probably been like them, wouldn't I? Because I can knit like that. But yeah, I don't think I'd want to watch. In fact, I know I wouldn't want to watch. I digress. Back to the plans. So yeah, various plans. I've cut out some, um, a skirt and a couple of dresses I've got to sew up. For my youngest daughter before she goes back to uni so they're her requests plus she's um, written some other requests but fabric to be found for those um i'm loath to sew i've got some fabrics that are great for summer sewing but i'm going to leave those for next year because my brain is going towards autumn sewing i've been autumn um, wardrobe planning and things that i want in my wardrobe so i thought i'll talk about that with you next week how you plan your autumn sewing um, you know, think about gaps. So the exciting project I've got on, because I'm going to the Dressmakers Ball on the 1st of October, so I need a frock for that. And my way of thinking is you make a dress that you would never ever normally wear. Um, you know, that real fancy, not even going out for dinner dress. So when I bought this beautiful little 30s velvet um, purse, I'm just seeing how it's all gathered at the back there. It's, um, it needs some paper. I've got to put some paper in to bring it right down. But I'm sure it's handmade. And it's all embroidered with these little gold stars and then these gold roses around here. It's absolutely beautiful, this clutch. So I want to use this. And this inspired me for my choice. So I went off searching for the perfect um, gold fabric. And I found this um, satin, um, crepe backed satin. Can you see that? So I think they go rather beautifully together. Now I saw a beautiful golden dress in um, uh, Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. I did show that to you last week, an image of Amy Adams wearing that, you know, when it's showing like that. So I'm in two minds, whether I have a totally gold dress or I use this lovely um, velvet flocked, um, I'm trying to find the right side, this tool with um, velvet on it and I was thinking do I 
do the sleeves with just that over underline parts with the gold you know mix it in put some velvet ribbons on there they're all my ideas i've been drawing up some ideas these are by no means um what my finished dress will be like but um yeah i've been drawing out some more ideas to to bring it all together but yeah i rather like how these all look together rather spectacular just pull it out in those spots so yes i haven't decided yet um but i don't think it's been a problem to make this up you know once i can get going so yeah all exciting plans um and just tons of others in the background because yeah i'm always making and sewing and doing oh the other thing i want to show you I'm trying to think where is this here i'll just reach out and get it um, scissors falling down got this lovely book amongst others yesterday went in the second hand bookshop in the national trust and it's susan crawford's vintage um gifts to knit and it's absolutely delightful i've have seen this but never knew what was inside it so um i've seen lots and lots of projects i want to make i'm just flicking through see these beautiful um 1940s style um dress bows you know the clips so you can make your own little sequin sparkled ones. Um, just flicking through to the other page, I just want to show there's a most lovely, they say it's a bed jacket, but I'm just thinking it would be nice to wear, you know, as a cardigan for any time. Can you see that? It's the most heavenly pink with a velvet turquoise ribbon in it. And that's got quite a raised knit. I love that. Um, and there was uh, a little cape and there's also some gloves. So I absolutely love that cape. I don't know if I'm a cape wearer, but I think I'd have to become one because I just think that looks so lovely. And it might just be nice for wearing at home, keeping warm during the winter months. So um, that's a dis Oh, I absolutely adore these gloves. I have made gloves before, but I get bored after the first one, which isn't good as I've got two hands. But I think they're worth um making because they are absolutely beautiful and on the underside can you see there they've got the blue so yeah i'm still gathering more projects um i've just got to live forever and then i will get to do all the things that i want to make i think that's the only way forward really anyway so that's my catch up with all the crafty and creative so um I hope you've enjoyed that um love to know what you're up to um you know and if you're already thinking about autumn sewing or going to the dressmaker's ball or um you know do you like to knit as well just to relax and what do you do when you can't sew um how do you get that mojo back this and many more questions but anyway it's just nice whatever you want to um say it's lovely to hear from you if you don't want to miss my videos, then please subscribe, hit the bell, you'll be notified um, and like and um, yeah, all of that malarkey jazz. So until next time, thanks for joining me today. I love you being here. It's um, really good fun. So anon, I will see you anon. <laughs> Why I said it in that way around. Um, so ta-ta, bye-bye.